My next guest is quite busy. She is not only about to debut the second season of her show on Amazon Prime, Love Gianni, she also has a new cookbook coming out, and she's the head of her own foundation. And oh, by the way, she may be the best dressed person to ever appear on the exam room. I am so excited that Gianna Simone is here with us today. Gianna, thank you so very much for joining us. Best intro. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm serious. When I have somebody on the program who has been named by Vogue magazine as one of the best dress at Cannes Film Festival, I'm like, oh my goodness, how can we not talk about this? I love a good outfit. I do love a good outfit. It shows you're shining in gold today. I love it. It matches your bright personality. Oh, thank you. I We were just saying how we matched before we started rolling. I love your your outfit as well. Indeed. Our time and our clothes are coordinating right now. Um, so, but let's, uh, let's talk about uh, you for a little bit. Um, before we get into the show, which is fantastic, Dr. Neil Barnard, by the way, will be a guest uh, again in season two. I believe he was an original guest on season one, so you brought him back. He always has such fantastic things to talk about. I want to start with you, however. Um, we said just before we started recording, that life is a journey and everybody has a journey. And what I have read about you and learned so far is that your journey is quite extraordinary. Uh, and it begins very early in life in Boston where you were bouncing from home to home. You were in the foster care system. Yeah, yeah. So I was um, physically and emotionally abused growing up. And um, around 13, I... I really started a, a little bit before that. I really started um, fighting back and just being fed up with what was happening. And, and I think people, you know, get to a certain point where it's like, I've had enough of this and I don't want to be treated this way anymore. And I don't need to be treated this way anymore. And I want to be set free. And, you know, even with eating, we can, we can get fed up with the way that we're treating ourselves with food and any relationship you can just get fed up with how you're being treated. And if the person is unwilling to change or stop, I knew I could get out of it and in, in a very messy way, of course, but mm. I still got out of it. And, and I still knew I had the option to say, Hey, this isn't right. And I knew it. I knew it in my spirit. Like I'm not supposed to be treated like this. People aren't supposed to be treated like this. Are people treated worse? Yeah. Do people endure much worse? Yes. And it's, and it's horrifying what happens in this world. Animals, billions of animals a year get treated horrifically. And, and I think that's why I have, such a heart for innocence being treated um, in an unjust way is because I went through it. And, and so I, um, I fought back ultimately, long story short, went into foster care and did, I got um, passed around from home to home. And a lot of people just wanted babies. There was one night I was, I stayed in this um, double bunk bed for, for like a child, like a small child, I barely fit in it. And and the woman, she just wanted a young, she was very nice, but she just wanted a young kid. And, and so I would, I went around to about seven different homes, ended up in a group home for girls. And the, the house mom was extremely nice. I'm, I still visit her from time to time. And um, it was just a, a, an incredible, an incredibly dark experience mm -hmm. incredible experience but incredibly dark experience and it taught me a lot it gave me a lot of um like oh i went through this so i can totally do this now like i was on set for for star trek uh, several years ago and i was so nervous and i was like how am i actually going to say something right now like i'm amongst greatness and and then i had like a reality check and i was like gianna you went through horrific times you're gonna be fine <laughs> yes nothing. and so just things like that that would be that would normally be a little bit challenging or not very challenging psychologically um or emotionally for me that doesn't say i don't have hard times still like i, I i'm on the phone with my best friend frequently <laughs> being like help what do i do um oh i lost you where did you go Oh, I'm still here. I'm just doing the one shot, you know, playing director over here. That's all. <laughs> I'm not familiar with all this, but I'm still getting used to it all. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, there are times where I still, I still feel like, what are the answers? What do I do? And and so um, 
but I, I do, I have learned that it, it is life happens for us, not to us. And I do not like being a victim. And I share my story, not to, to talk badly about a person, but to tell the truth and to say, listen, I went through this stuff. If I went through it and came out for the better, so can you. And I want to be a voice of encouragement. Um, I want to share my story and give people permission to share, share theirs and, and not be guilty or, or feel um, embarrassment towards go going through difficult times. It's okay. Everybody, everybody does. And you can come out stronger and better for it. But where did this sense of self-worth initially come from? We hear these tales of children who have been so horrifically abused and their sense of self-worth is less than dirt. And here you are, you pulled yourself up by the bootstraps and made a phenomenal success of yourself. Where did this come from? It would have been so easy to me, to it seems to really kind of deviate and go down that darker path where you don't take care of yourself, where you don't feel like you're worth it. But what clicked for you to make it say, to make you say, yeah, I am worth it and I'm going to succeed? I did go through the dark path. <laughs> I did abuse myself. I struggled with eating disorders. I dabbled in drugs. I, I don't like it. You know, you don't like, you don't like how you feel and, and struggling with eating disorders and, and not liking how you, how you feel or wanting to see change in a certain area or certain areas, you, you realize, okay, well, pff, what do I have to do? And then certain and opportunities come into your life, certain people come into your life and they show you that this is maybe a helpful way to overcoming that, you know, overcoming an eating disorder, overcoming, um, you know, I started working out at a gym and, and that's how I, I decided that, okay, this feels better than maybe going down this path. You know, I, I, I was in um, the group home with this girl who came down from, we were in Boston, she came down from Maine to Boston because her mom had cancer. This is the, her story that she shared with me. And she was a young prostitute. And, and I was literally sitting next to her and she was telling me the story about how this John had a gun to her head when, when she was, you know, in this, in this setting, I won't go too deep for, for the audience, but um, a, her, just horrifying story. And I was thinking to myself, I was sitting there and I was like, wow, somebody always has it worse than us. And, and we are, I could have made choices that she made and she could make choices that I, I made. But to see that that's not where I want to go or want to do, and I and I learn and I learned from her. Okay, well, if you do that, you know, you you try things because some people have no guidance. I didn't have a lot of guidance, and and so you you try different various things that like, oh, well, I want to be skinny. I'll just starve myself. But there's a better option. Oh, you need money for your mom's cancer treatment. Well, you'll prostitute yourself. But there's a better option. And then when we do these things that ultimately hurt ourselves in the end, we see that they hurt. And then we end up learning and then getting back on track and learning how to do things a little bit better, a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned that, you know, I made my mistakes yeah. and, I, and I fell down and I pulled myself up and by the grace of God, which I also have a very tight relationship with Jesus and, and he's my everything. And, and I, I'm not shy in sharing that because it's, it's my truth. You know, I would be doing myself a disservice and everybody else a disservice if I wasn't fully honest with, with what has truly helped me and hearing how loved I am on a daily basis and having that tight knit relationship with my creator is honestly the one main thing that has changed my life from darkness to light, honest to God. Outstanding. And you mentioned that you had an eating disorder a number of times here. What specifically were you struggling with there? So I was starving myself constantly and I would actually stay up at night. And when Instagram just started coming around, I would scroll through pictures looking at food because my brain was so, my body and my brain mm. was so so desperately hungry and and so i also um went through a period of bulimia and i would get acrylic nails and my the two front acrylic nails were were coming off so when i was in foster care my um caseworker would be like hey gianna and my foster sisters would also tell on me they're like gianna's throwing up and um <laughs> and so my caseworker was like, Hey, where are your two nails? And also it was, it was affecting my gums. 
And so, like I said before, you know, we, we try these various things and then when they start to hurt us and we see that we're suffering even more than where we started, we're like, okay, well, let's reassess this. And something's, something's, something's going to change. So, um, so anorexia and bulimia, and you know, I was, it wasn't working. I was actually gaining weight because my body was holding on to all the energy it could to, for my survival and bless our bodies. You know, our bodies are so full of grace and, and protection. Um, so, so yeah, that, that's what I struggled with. And little did I know all I had to do, but I I had, nobody was telling me this and I had no idea. All I had to do was adopt a whole food plant-based diet, which I have now. And I've never looked or felt better in my entire life. And it, and it set me free. God used that to set me free. I would, I would go down to, I was like, man, I have to stop throwing up. So I would walk down to the library. This was before laptops or smartphones. I I had a Nextel phone. Remember Nextel phones? Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my goodness, Grant. Wow. Holy throwback, Batman. That is fantastic. So I would walk down to the library and I would I would take my library card and wait for a computer to open up. And I was like, how do you stop being bulimic? And and so I, I knew I had to do this. And I was actually on my own because so many people were just ready to to attack me on it. And I didn't feel supported. I didn't feel like there was any sort of help. So I had to do it alone. I had to do it you know, by myself and, and look up, um, various ways to stop throwing up. And, and I did. And then eventually years later, I found a whole food plant-based diet. Wow. Again, though, that goes back to that inner strength that you have. That is so admirable. You, it's so easy to continue to go down that deep, dark abyss when you really can't see light and you think that there is no light at all anywhere but you have to fight and scratch and claw to find that light. And you did that. You put up the fight and you said that you were worth it. And by God, look at you today. Again, it's just the way that you've been able to transform your life based off of the circumstances where you came from and everything that you've been through is so remarkable, let alone the fact that, oh, by the way, now you have a cookbook and your own series and you've been on major motion pictures and TV like Holy cow. I think that people who are hearing this right now are like, this Gianna is what's up. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you have an incredible story too. And you. Would, you, would you mind sharing what we were talking a little bit about, how there's a connection between obesity and anorexia or bulimia? There, there absolutely is. I think that in, in my previous conversations, especially with uh, Dotsie Bausch and Alexandra Paul from Switch for Good, whom I know that you've uh, been on their program, uh, they also suffered from eating disorders and they were on your end of the spectrum. Um, and when they were sharing their stories, I was like, there's a lot in common here with what I was feeling at the time. It's like your brain just gets wired on food. And for me, it was compulsive eating where I couldn't stop. Like I was super addicted to it, but there was no purge to it. Okay. So there's no, the bulimia aspect wasn't there. It was just, let me get as much into my system as humanly possible and let me keep it there. Whereas, uh, they were, they were purging and, and, but the food addiction, the way that it just controls your life, you know, is so similar. It's just a matter of how that addiction manifests itself. That's really the only difference that we found, the three of us talking about it. And when you think about it, you think of somebody who was 420 pounds like I was, has nothing in common with somebody who's anorexic. I say that there is far more in common than people actually realize. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, it's the same a, addiction and looking to food to, to solve the hurt deep down inside. That's exactly what it is. You're trying to solve a problem. You're trying to solve a, a you know, a, something that's hurt. You're trying to find that missing piece of the puzzle and you can eat and eat and eat and eat or not eat and starve yourself. But neither one of those options is in fact the answer at all. They're like two of the worst options that you could possibly have. But, you know, my goodness gracious, um, if you, my heart goes out to anybody who struggles with that, um, whether anorexia, bulimia, if, you know, binge eating disorder, whatever the case may be. I mean, I just want to put my arms around them and let them know that it's going to be okay. Yeah. Because as you have discovered and have, you know, thousands of others have discovered is there is light at the end of that tunnel. You just have to keep going. And I promise you, you will get there. Yeah, that's true. I was just watching this um, incredible YouTube video from the psychologist and it was nonviolent communication. 
And there were so many helpful tips. It's funny how like when we're searching for something else, it, um, a different area or aspect of life, how it can spill over to other aspects of life. And, and it, was, it was all about this nonviolent communication. And human beings have two basic needs. Please, or they're, all, they're always saying something, please and thank you, because we have needs. We have needs, and then we need to get those needs fulfilled. And, and when we're struggling with a problem, like an eating disorder, you know, we have a need to, uh, you know, I had a need to be thin. I had a need to um, nourish my body. We all have that need. And, and, and that was a way to meet my need. And there are multiple, there can be multiple ways to meet a need. And they're, they're like, in our situation, a whole food plant-based diet is the way to meet that need. You can feel freedom in eating, having a beautiful relationship with food. I am, I'm personally not triggered anymore by food. And, and I'm, I, I'm, it's all about abundance. It's an abundance mindset. And it's like you were saying, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. And it's, it, it will last until the day we die. You know, it's, it's, it's sustainable and it's, it's, there's literally no downside. It's best for the animals, the earth, us, our mental health, physical health, beauty. I mean, there's so many upsides to it's all upsides. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I I've not uh, discovered a downside to this yet whatsoever. Um, and I, that's not to say that this is a panacea. Um, but uh, I mean, there is just so much good that, that comes with this on so many levels. It's just really remarkable. And we're going to get to that in just a second, but I want to ask you really quickly before we move on to when you discovered this way of eating this lifestyle, um, when you were still anorexic and, and, and bulimic and going through that, did you find yourself self making excuses to continue down that unhealthy path like reasons to justify that continued behavior oh of, of course because i still had that need deep down inside i had those needs to you know what i just expressed and that was my way of meeting those needs and mm -hmm. if someone presented a different way to meet those needs i would entertain it but yeah if i wasn't going to get my need met then why would i change yeah and, and yeah. i think it, and then i would hurt more you know i expressed about like the the gums and my nails and people like asking me questions and then the embarrassment and then the shame that's associated with it and then me actually having like you know a a, a real conversation with myself like maybe this isn't the best for you but what do i do how do i get my need met and and then you just have to look, you know, you just have to have faith that there is a better way and we don't have to abuse ourselves to, to get our needs met. It's kind of like a backwards way of thinking, you know, like I'm going to hurt myself to love myself. Yep. It's, yep. it's a it's, lie. It's, it's, it's so warped that thinking. And I remember like convincing myself that I needed to continue eating you know, 10,000 calories a day to maintain my job as that wacky morning sidekick on big 100.3, the radio station here in Washington, DC. I needed to be big Chuck, but I knew continuing down that path also was ultimately going to land me in an early grave. But I had convinced myself that that is what I needed to do. And in turn, I was loving myself and hurting myself and hating myself to a certain degree at the same time. I mean, you want to talk about layers of an onion, man. Like this is some complex stuff right there. Um, but it, it really does. Like once you again, find that light at the end of the tunnel, man, it is a sweet day. It is a very sweet day. Um, it's an honor and a joy to share it too. Oh my goodness gracious. Absolutely. Let's talk about another sweet day. And that is the day that you discovered the idea of eliminating meat, eliminating dairy from your diet and going on this ultimate healthy path, learning about the whole food plant-based diet. When did all of this come into your life? So it came into my life when I was about 20, 22, 23. And I was struggling with minor acne, but as you know, I'm, I'm an actress and a model. And that was no bueno, like the, I needed clear skin. And I would go to a dermatologist and he would put me on oral steroids and oral antibiotics. And I was on antibiotics for about a year and my hair was starting to fall out. And I was like, well, it's another thing. Like, okay, I have a need, but this, this isn't meeting my need and it's actually causing more problems. And so I would stay up at night and cry. I would worry and thank God it, it never affected God never let it affect my, my calling and my purpose. And, and, um, 
I, I went down the rabbit hole of truth. I was literally starving for truth. And I, I knew that I had to figure out what it was that was going to meet this need and to, to have better skin, to heal my skin. And I found um, Forks Over Knives. I found Freely the Banana Girl, um, all sorts of documentaries, Fat Sick, Nearly Dead. But then I discovered Earthlings and then saw what happens to innocent babies, literally. And I, because of, you know, being abused, I, I just, I had such a trauma response and I was like screaming, crying, and I was shaking. And I just, I could not, I could not actually believe what happens because it's so clean and crisp and, and um, like with the clear packaging in the, in the grocery stores and, and you don't see any of this. You don't see any of it. And even with fashion too, you know, with leather shoes or leather jackets or fur coats or fur rugs or wool or silk, I just, I, my mind was blown. And I was like, why is this not told to us? Why is this mm. not shown to us? It be, Because they wouldn't make any sales. That's why. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, so that I discovered all of this, you know, and, and then I, I eventually, over time, I, and then over time, I eventually went vegan. And then I kept learning about uh, a vegan diet and I was still eating oils and some sugar. I was eating lots of nuts and, and I needed to, to tweak things, but I had nobody really teaching me. So I kind of had to do it over time and, and learn it myself. And, and so, you know, lots of greens, I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to, how to do it all. There's no like perfect way to, to live and be, and everybody is different. Um, so, you know, some will thrive off of a, a great amount of fruit. Some will thrive off a great amount of vegetables and, and what to incorporate here. What does your body need more of? What does my body need more of? Maybe you need a little bit more iron. Maybe I need a little bit more zinc. I don't know. You know, like maybe you need a little bit more protein based on your, or carbohydrates based on your, your workout regimen or based on my workout regimen. So just learning about that. And it's all fascinating. I mean, it's very simple too, like down to it. And I, I eat very intuitively now. Um, but I do know that I, my body thrives off an abundance of greens. My, my personal body, like my skin, my hair, my eyes, my nails, like everything glows and shows. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> abundance of, of greens. So. Yeah. I, well, to, to borrow an uh, old, I think it was uh, Billy Crystal, an old SNL bit. You look marvelous. Oh, um, you. <laughs> um, I, let me let me ask you though about that initial response that you had when you started going down this rabbit hole of truth. I love the way that you put that. Yeah. Y your your reaction from what you were describing was a very violent one, a, a physical one. Do you think that you had that severe of a reaction to that because of the trauma that you went through yourself? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I, I yeah. mean, I think that a certain level, like we were saying before, everybody goes through their hell on earth. And we, we become more empathetic. That's why like a lot of people that are in the military that have seen what they've seen in the military, then help people who are in the military or coming out of that because you've been equipped with, with your personal experiences to then help people. And I think that's a big reason why I went through what I went through is to help people in that position and beings in that position. And, and that's why we, you know, we're here, we're supposed to be helping each other. We're supposed to be loving each other. That is literally our purpose. And in various ways, in all, uh, all different ways, um, whether it be like in my case on set or making movies and having a great platform to share all this information with, um, you know, making this show, making Love Gianna and, and coming on your show and, and having people on my show and just talking about it and discussing it and presenting it to people in a way that's easily accessible and understood and saying, here, just educate yourself. And this happens. Do you really want this to happen? No, nobody wants to hurt people. I mean, maybe like the small select few that are not stable or mentally sound, but, but I'd say the majority of people do not want bad things to happen to other people or beings. And then we're powerful. Our decisions and our choices matter. We can change this world and it just all starts with us and decision by decision. And it can start with what we eat and it can be fun and enjoyable. Man, I'm going to isolate that last 10 seconds. I'm going to make that my ringtone. That's how powerful that was. That is unbelievable. I love that so much. And we are powerful. And I love the fact that now you have acquired all of this knowledge and you've taken this approach like I have and so many others have. It's like it's too good to keep to yourself. You want to share it with people. You want to help people along who are struggling themselves. You want to help lift them up. 
and and show them this healthier path. And that did lead to the creation, I'm sure, of this uh, show, Love Gianna. So talk to us a little bit about that. You you have season one of rap, but now season two is coming out on Amazon Prime as well. What was the inspiration behind that? Was it seriously like, this is too good to keep to myself, I got to help others? Yeah, yeah, it was it was probably a, a bunch of different things um, in my downtime in between projects. I, I want to, you know, I would go to these these pig vigils and I would cry and see these all of us giving these pigs water, but then they would go to their death. And I'm like, well, this is wonderful, but we need to touch the world. We really do. We need to. And then we have the opportunity to do that with the Internet, with social media, with YouTube, with Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, like all of these platforms we can we can play around with sure that's fun but we can also use it as a tool for good and spreading this very important information not only is it helping the animals and those baby pigs or cows or chickens or you know whatever animal is is being slaughtered and unnecessarily and us too heart disease is the number one killer of men and women and it's a foodborne illness and my friend dr esselstyn likes to say it's a toothless paper tiger it need not exist and if it does exist it need not progress and so our diet and what we eat is so 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 important and a lot of people the show came from that you know wanting to see change in a specific area having the time to do so the resources to do so and it came from also people me talking to people and people, you know, listening, but always saying, well, I'll ask my doctor. Well, I want to hear what a doctor has to say about it because everybody glorifies doctors, which doctors are incredible. I'm so grateful for doctors. Every time I get sick, I'm grateful for doctors. Every time we need a doctor, we're grateful for doctors. They are incredible. And especially right now in the world, I'm so grateful for them. Um, and so people really like to listen to doctors, but a lot of doctors are not educated in the area of nutrition, as you know. And so I thought, well, I have so much respect for all these doctors that I've learned about a whole food plant-based diet from and who are literally reversing the number one killer of men and women and treating it with food. People need to hear this. People need to continue hearing it. And I wanted to give them a, an additional platform to share this powerful, powerful, powerful information to the majority of this world who can see it who can have access to it so that's where season one came from i just wanted to educate people from doctors themselves and because people listen to doctors so and these people are, these doctors are the ones to listen to on this because they're they're doing it so oh, yeah. curing heart disease you know or take taking care of all of these these ailments with diet and, um, and so that's where it came from. And then season two, I wanted to inspire. So season one is all about education. Season two is about inspiration with plant-based athletes. And we interviewed Dotsie Bausch and Nima Delgado and Scott Jurek, Rich Roll, just to name a few and, um, and incredible others. And we're also shooting next month, um, the second set. So we're going to have another 13 episode with, with plant-based athletes. Hey, you are keeping busy. I love this. I love this. And in the midst of that, you're also putting together uh, the cookbook, Plant Love, which is uh, phenomenal. Um, you and your your plant-based partner in crime, your bestie, put this one together as an e-cookbook. Um, and talk to me about that process. Was, was heart disease the specific focus with Plant Love? Because as you said, I mean, it is the number one killer. And I remember it was just last week I was recording an episode doing the wraparounds for it. And I was crunching numbers. It's like one person dies of heart disease every 36 seconds. And I was like, well, for the course of this show, that means 90 people will have died from heart disease. And it was just mind blowing to me. So a lot definitely needs to be done on that. As you just said, was that really the inspiration with Plant Love, this e-cookbook, extraordinary e-cookbook? Well, the, the thank you for saying that. <laughs> um, the The main purpose of this book is because a lot of people asked me and and my best friend Andrea Logan. She's an incredible. We we call each other um, supermodel movie stars. She's like you're a supermodel movie star. I'm like you're. A <laughs> And so what we, and she's had her struggles too. Um, she's, ha she's overcome so much in, in the area of health and she is just a wonder woman and a beautiful, stunning mama of three beautiful babies. And well, they're not babies anymore, <laughs> but once a baby, always a baby, especially to your mama. But anyway, so we wanted to, and we're both Christians and we want to, 
um, plant love in people's lives and, pe and for people to learn how to love plants. And it's very easy, it's very simple, and they're all whole food plant-based recipes. No refined sugar, no refined oil. Um, and yeah, just whole food plant-based recipes. And we wanted to, to bring, yes, of course, you know, a, a cookbook to help with the number one killer, but also with eating disorder. She's also struggled with an eating disorder and just the way we eat, we eat like this. And people would always say to, to me specifically, you know, Gianna, what do you eat? You're in great shape. What's, okay, I wanna go vegan, but what do I eat? You know, these questions would pop up. And so there was, where there's a need, we wanted to bring a product and, and, a, and a tool to help that need. So um, this was our tool and we, and we wanted to make it all about love and, and plants. I know I'm sensing a love theme. Love Gianna. Plant <laughs> love. Like you're just a lovely person. Um, Hi, if, how are you? <laughs> if there is one recipe in the cookbook that somebody absolutely positively needs to try this very second, what is your go-to? Okay. I know. Easy, like such a short, simple question, but so hard at the same time. I'd say, can I pick two? Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'd say the brownies and the cookies. Oh, okay. The cookies okay. are so simple too. There's only three ingredients in them, but I'm not going to tell you what ingredients they are. You'll have to go try the cookbook. Oh, you tease you. Oh, you tease you. And who doesn't like a good brownie? Yeah. Oh, the brownies are so good. They're made with black beans. Oh, okay. Okay. I see where your head's at and I like it very much. That's that whole food plant-based thing. Like you don't have to worry about picking it up off of a store shelf and seeing like 50 ingredients, half of which you've never even heard of before. Like we're talking about nice, clean recipes here. That's fantastic. And people can pick up a copy at your website, correct? Uh, yes. It's an ebook right now. Andrea and I are thinking about printing a bunch of copies and maybe putting them on Amazon or, or providing um, a link for that on, on my website too. But, but for right now it's an ebook and we figured, you know, with the pandemic, nobody's really going to stores. Yes. Maybe people would buy it off Amazon. That's why we're thinking of printing it right now. But we thought ebook is the best most clean way to, to have it um, be brought to people right now. So it's on my website, giannasimone.com and it's under the shop section, or you could go to giannasimone.com forward slash shop. And we'll go ahead and put a link to that in the episode notes or the show description. And you can click on it right there. Your one stop shop uh, all there. And then I can't let you go also, Gianna, without asking about the Gianna Simone Foundation, because again, you're paying forward everything that you have learned and, and you're trying to help others along the way. Talk to us a little bit about what the Gianna Simone Foundation is. Thank you for asking about that. And it's such a near and dear thing to my heart. And so it's just, you know, again, the change I wanted to see in this world. And I, um, I had a friend who was providing college scholarships to young women in Rwanda. And we had the opportunity to go see them and meet them. And um, we were sending 10 girls to school there. And it was just an incredible experience. And we got to um, toward the main university, which is Kigali University, and um, just incredible human beings. And I wanted to continue um, educating people in Rwanda. So we send um, men and women to, to school there. And then also having a heart for foster kids and also animals. And I thought, well, how can I merge those two? And um, I mentor at a facility in Rosemead, California called Maryvale. And um, I, I thought, well, why don't I bring some of these girls to farm sanctuaries and unite the abused and neglected children with abused and neglected animals and bring them together and unite healing in both parties and just have fun and um, eat plant-based snacks. All the girls have questions when we, we feed them the, their plant-based lunch and, and um, just, you know, kind of tear down stereotypes and, and those walls that people may have um, that, that are just unnecessary and, and show them that they can have, you know, plant-based cookies and burritos and, and that, you know, they are, when they eat meat and dairy, they're eating our friends that we just met. And then they make the connection and just planting those seeds and just having fun and just loving on these girls. So, um, and then the sex industry is very near and dear to my heart too. And um, just change, you know, change I want to see in this world. And so we financially support an organization that helps with, um, eradicating the sex industry in a in a certain area of the world it's kind of I can't really talk much about it because it is um just something that that can't be talked about because of safety issues and stuff like that but um we do help that organization as well you have such a a good heart 
And the world definitely needs more people like you who are so compassionate for both humans and animals alike. And um, it is just, Gianna, it's been so wonderful to have you on the show for this past half hour. It's really just kind of flown by. I would love to extend an uh, invitation to you to come back anytime, uh, continue to talk some more, uh, chop it up. Uh, maybe when you get to season three of Love Gianna, um, we, we can get you back or the follow up to the to the e-cookbook, whatever the case may be. But you definitely have an open invitation to come on back anytime. Thank you. You've been so kind. And thank you so much. And thank you to all these viewers that, you know, listen and support you and support us and everybody that you have on the show. So I'm very, very appreciative. If you feel like you've raised your health IQ by a couple of points, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and leave a nice comment below. And to hear the entire interview, head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you get your shows from and subscribe to the exam room by the Physicians Committee. And please leave a five-star rating.